Do you run your own freelance business? Or maybe you're thinking about picking up some business on the side. Well, then you need FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the quickest and easiest way to get invoices out to your clients. It's easy to use. It works anywhere, available from any device, uh, on the desktop, iPhone, iPad, Android, and all of your data is backed up and secure. And it makes it really easy to get organized and get paid. You'll be tracking time, logging expenses, and invoicing your clients in no time. You can also save time billing, freeing up several days per month to focus on the work that you love, and you get paid faster. FreshBooks customers are paid on average five days faster because there's a link on the invoice that says pay me now. And it's a great way to grow your business. Plus, FreshBooks is offering a 30-day trial. That's right, 30-day trial if you try them out. So go to gofreshbooks.com slash devchat and enter devchat in the how did you hear about us section. Once again, for a 30-day trial, go to gofreshbooks.com slash devchat and enter devchat in the how did you hear about us section. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of My Angular Story. This week, we're talking to Justin Schwarzenberger. Justin, do you want to say hi? Hey, how's it going? It's going well. Um... We've had we had you on to talk about um, Angular Air a few episodes ago. Yeah, we did. It was uh, that was pretty cool. The meta crossover episode that was fun. Yeah, yeah, it was funny because uh, you know we we brought you on our show to talk about another show, <laughs> which was yeah, interesting. Right, right. So yeah, um, this show we we kind of try and capture your story. We we you know where you came from, what you've done, what you're working on. Just give people an idea of what you're, you know, what you're about and who you are. So I thought maybe we just jump all the way back and start at the beginning and talk about how you got into programming. Yeah, sure. So we'll go way, way back, I guess, <laughs> pretty far back, um, but not too far back. I mean, for me, my journey into programming really started around uh, junior college. Uh, uh-huh. And so uh, I had some class, I took class in C. I uh, started some C++ classes, and that was really my introduction to software development, per se. Right. I've always been somebody that's uh, highly into tech, love tech, uh, a lot of video games, love video games since I was a little kid. Uh, so, um, and my father actually did, used to sell the big giant satellite dishes back in the day, uh, the big huge ones that you put in the, your backyard. And so oh, he wow. was really into tech. Up. And so uh, I think that's kind of where I got it. So I always had this love for tech at a, at a young age, but really just didn't get into programming uh, until about junior college when I started talking, doing like C classes. C. <laughs> when I when I took C. programming classes, it was Java, which is a little more approachable in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, you know, it was interesting. I mean, for me, uh, I think the logic stuff, math and logic stuff always kind of came uh-huh. easy to me as a kid. And uh so I kind of grabbed it and said, okay, well, maybe I should explore this, you know, avenue, right? Uh, but as I got into it, I also have a very creative side and creative drive for me. Uh, so as I got into that and started doing the C stuff, I'm like, okay, cool. I can kind of put some stuff together. But really, I'm building this uh, command line things, right? And I'm like, man, I want some UI in here. And it, I don't know, it didn't, it was kind of difficult in the very beginning for me to kind of get into that because it was just very much programmatic, which I guess makes sense, right? But I wanted this UI later on top of it as well. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm I'm curious, what was it then that, that got your attention? I mean, did you go into college thinking I'm going to do computer science or did you take a class and then go, this is for me? No, I really, um, you know, my, one of my big passions is uh, writing and mm-hmm. film. And so I really wanted to go to college for that and focus on that. Uh, but circumstances, paying my own way. I kind of had to start junior college. And so when I started there, then I'm kind of exploring some other classes while I was there. Um, and, you know, programming was one of those things that I did uh, to kind of prep for uh, twitch, switching to a four-year college. Uh, and so as I took that, kind of got into it, it kind of started flowing. And I'm like, okay, well, this is pretty, you know, maybe there's a future there. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so what was it about programming then that got you excited? You know, it was really when I started getting into uh, playing around with like web development. I think that was really it. Uh, you know, I took these classes C, C++. Like I said, it was the whole, you know, terminal sort of thing. Wasn't really feeling it. Uh, but as I was going through college, I got this job at a local internet service provider. For anybody out there who still kind of remembers those from back in the day, you know, uh-huh. dial up sort of yep. things you get online. Uh, and we had one uh, locally here. And so I... Uh, got a job there doing tech support on that. 
Oh, nice. And that company actually had an internal tool that was built in PHP. It was all web-based, uh, had to run in uh, Netscape Navigator, I think at the time was like the requirement. It couldn't run an IE <laughs> the way they programmed it, right? But it was this web-based app that they called the Bomb Business Operations Manager. And that kept track of all the uh, customer management stuff, orders, that sort of thing, um, connectivity and stuff like that. And so being around that got me pretty excited about programming, but programming for the web and for this visual medium. And this visual medium that you could get delivered to right away, right? Um, it's uh -huh. another thing that for me, kind of instant gratification really drives for me. It's excitement for me. So like the ability to write some code and then see it on screen and have people use it right away was pretty uh, exciting. So it was really there that I, I got kind of ramped up my excitement about it. Uh, and then as I was there for a little while longer, we ended up having this long term, the company had this plan of getting acquired. And so we ended up needing a retention department to try and keep our existing clients, uh, our existing customers, style customers, so we could build the customer base to they were gonna sell off the company. Right. And so um, I got a chance to lead up that retention department. And as I did that, I started building some of the internal tools to track our numbers, to do um, escalated ticket management and stuff like that. Kind of these just these internal tools. So I got a chance to kind of cut my teeth on doing some um, production ready type of applications and things. A lot of PHP development at that time and, and that sort of thing. And that was really, I think, when I drew in and was like, okay, this is, I'm digging this, right? Right. That's interesting. I, I kind of have a similar story as far as uh, some of this goes. You know, I, I studied and worked at the, at the university that, uh, you know, at BYU. And yeah, it was the opportunities to kind of build something real. And then um, when I graduated, I went and worked for Mosey and it was the same thing there, right? I was doing, I was running tech support and I was building systems to handle the support load. And yeah, it was like, oh, this solves real problems. It's none of the, the toy apps that I'd built to date. So I definitely identify with that. Uh, how did you get around to, um, I guess you were doing PHP, so that's web, but what was it that, that brought you to Angular? You know, after the grid, kind of had uh, a couple of different companies, different people, and doing a lot of custom development, web-based development. Uh, at one point, we had this company that we were doing a uh, custom content management system with PHP, MySQL on the back end, uh, doing kind of the full stack sort of thing. Uh, eventually, ended up building a uh, full ERP system uh, uh -huh. with, with a couple of people for a client that handled order management, customer management, the whole shebang, shipping, all that sort of stuff. And uh, that project built in, in PHP uh, lasted for a long time. And at a couple, a handful of years ago, at my previous company, decided to uh, pursue building a new front end for that. You know, basically taking the PHP app, it served mm -hmm. you know, full stack deal. We're going to rip that off and, and build a new uh, JavaScript client side front end for that application. Um, and so there was a decision to try and decide, figure out what framework, what platform, what, what do we want to use for that, right? And at the time, uh, one of my friends was exploring whether we were going to do uh, AngularJS or Durandal. Mm -hmm. uh, those were kind of two key ones that we, we came down to at that point. Um, and we settled on AngularJS. And so that was kind of like the foray into that was starting to build this replication of the existing client app in AngularJS at the time. Gotcha. So, so what made you choose Angular JS over Durandal? So, I think it was uh, again, it was one of my friend's decisions. He kind of spearheaded that decision, but it was really uh, the the fact that it had a lot of the parts in it, right? It was mm -hmm. kind of like like a platform kind of deal, right? Um, and uh, and it had a lot of momentum at the time. Felt like it had more um, pulse to it, you know, it's something that we could, and it had, had a Google backing it, you know, trying to make some kind of business decisions around, well, Hey, this is, you know, Google's creating it. They're using it internally. They're, it's probably going to have a long shelf life. You know, uh, they're going to probably be active on making changes to it. So we won't necessarily get stuck waiting for some changes and things like that. Uh, so I think those are the things that help us land on it. Mm-hmm. But then we also, we were kind of like a Microsoft shop at that time, did a lot right. of .NET development and that sort of thing. And uh, we had been starting to leverage TypeScript at the time. And so I think that also kind of played into mm -hmm. our route. Because when we started doing AngularJS, we also started figuring out how we could leverage TypeScript with it and kind of bring those two together. 
and everything kind of just started fitting and we're like, okay, this, this feels good. Let's, let's take this on. That makes sense. Um, what, what do you personally, or what did you personally like about Angular JS? You know, that the whole idea of single page app or a, mm-hmm. a full blown application management with, with JavaScript, uh, in the client, right? And we've done a lot of stuff with Knockout, Acquire.js, jQuery to do bits and pieces of application development, still like server side building, um, delivering those things and having that JavaScript fill in chunks, you know, 2 a data binding and things like that. Right. Uh, I think it was really, and that was one of the things we looked at, we go, okay, we needed the single page application experience running on the client. You know, what are the frameworks gonna allow us to kind of do that? And that's why we started looking at the two. And that's, I think the, the big thing that, um, we sat there and said, okay, well, we need something that will power, power routing, power mm-hmm. that whole experience in the client, right? Um, and I think that was that was a big draw. Yep. Yeah, it was it was some of the same things that really got me into Angular as well. I mean, I was I was not looking to do single page apps, but the the two way binding and a lot of the other things that made it really convenient to um, manage really simple state and push it through the rest of the app. Were, were the things that really I, I think appealed to me? So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm hearing a lot yeah. of the same things that I thought. <laughs> yeah, I think you know I, I think maybe like thinking about like the knockout story, like knockout JS, uh-huh. right? And it gave you that two way bi- data binding um, and some observable stuff and stuff like that. But it was just you're building chunks, right? And we yeah. wanted more, and it felt like Angular JS gave you the whole package along with that. So, right. Yeah. So we're now into Angular. We're almost Angular 6, I think. We're pretty close. Um, What's made you stick with Angular over some of these bigger changes? I know a lot of people have really complained it's a different framework or it's not the same. They, you know, I I had to go relearn it. Or some people are moving off, you know, off of Angular uh, JS to other things because they don't want to learn it or figure out what the differences are. So, So what made you stick with it? So I think the first thing was, was that, uh, that project that I was talking about, uh, we had a long-term delivery on it. Mm-hmm. So we we're going to build this thing out for, for quite a while before it actually went to usage, right. And for the client. And so as a result, as soon as Angular 2's alpha was kind of announced, we thought, well, we still got a long delivery time. Let's just go ahead and switch over. Right. And right. so we adopted it at alpha phase and just rode with it. Right. So um, taking that on early in the beginning uh, and sticking with it, just kind of now I feel invested. Right. I spent a lot of time learning that uh, both sides, Angular JS and, and Angular. Uh, but I think that you know, there's still a lot of stuff there that that with the new version, if you want to call it the new version of Angular, but, you know, Angular as it is now, uh, that fits pretty well into I mean, again, I, I did, I've done a lot of .NET stuff. Mm-hmm. back in the day and so and c sharp and things like that and, and this it feels very similar to that and so that fit you know with that dependency injection kind of you know working with um the typescript whole story in there uh, all those things feel good for strong kind of enterprise application development or even just you know core application development um but i do think there's still that kind of there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to do to architect it. So I, I can see the appeal of other, you know, solutions and other, other directions. Um, and plus it's always exciting. I mean, I don't know for me in a, in the web space, it's something new all the time. So I, I always get excited about new and shiny things. So that's always cool. But, um, but I think just Angular is just solid. It has, a, you know, long life so far mm-hmm. in terms of experience, in terms of web life. Right. Um, and a lot of solid principles and things like that. And so I think it's just a good fit. Makes sense. So what have you done with Angular that you're particularly proud of? And it doesn't necessarily have to be code. It could be talks or videos or courses or whatever. Yeah, so um, I think it's really a, a lot of the stuff is helping share the knowledge on Angular mm-hmm. and teaching. I mean, for me, I, I really enjoy helping people out. And I think I mentioned this on the our previous podcast. We talked about uh, Angular Air, right. uh, Angular uh, pretty exciting thing for me. I have courses that I've done. So I really, I, you know, at one point I decided I want to help out, you know, other people. I want to, I want to teach this stuff. I, I feel like I, I have a knowledge of, of this material and I feel I have a pretty good ability at connecting to other people and understanding what their needs are and figure out how to tran- translate that to, you know, to, to other people and help them out. Um, so that I really, 
pursued how could I do that? And initially started out with like blog posts and things like that. Back in the day, I used to have a, a .NET blog post I did for uh, called I Want My MVC uh, for <laughs> the MVC framework. And uh, that was kind of my first foray into writing a bunch of stuff that would help other people out. Uh, and so that got me excited. Uh, right. So as I got into the Angular stuff and really started knowing it and learning it, I'm like, okay, I want to continue doing that sort of thing. And it really started with some courses. I have some Pluralsight courses that I put together, started with the Markdown course. Um, and then I, I did an Angular JS and TypeScript course really early on when we started doing that, that's those two together. Um, and uh, then I really wanted to t- teach kind of like the fundamentals of Angular uh, as we got into the new version of Angular. And so I was able to do that through lynda.com or LinkedIn. I have an Angular Essentials training course that I put up there that really covers the core basics of Angular and everything you need to get started, as well as a reactive forms course. So the, the coursework stuff that I've done, uh, I'm really proud of. I, I think it has a, a pretty good reach. Uh, now I'm at Narwhal uh, working there, and, and we have a product called Angular Play, uh, Playbook. And that has currently has some free courses up that I've I put together for our NX platform, as well as Angular V6, what's up, up and coming in that. And so I have some more material there to share and, and really proud of, of doing that stuff. I love the video production stuff and, and the writing of the scripts and things like that and, and um, sharing and teaching. So those are exciting. And then the Angular Air, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of uh, the opportunity to do Angular Air and to provide that on a weekly mm-hmm. basis. Uh, pull in a bunch of guests, uh, share their content, um, facilitate that. Uh, very excited about that. Cool. Yeah. And I, I've really enjoyed Angular Air. Of course, I listen audio only and it's kind of gone a little bit more toward the demo. So sometimes I'm, I, I can't see what you're talking about, but it's, it's definitely interesting to, you know, it's like, oh, okay, this is what people are thinking about and hearing about, you know, out, outside of the conversations that I have with Adventures in Angular. And so I get a feel there. Sometimes I invite some of your guests onto adventures in Angular, and sometimes it just gives me a little bit more context around something. So I really do appreciate the show. Yeah, likewise, likewise. I think uh, you know the content both of us are able to facilitate is is yeah. really great. So, so and then I've also uh, I've also been a speaker. Uh, uh-huh. I I spoke way back in the day. But my first kind of big speaking gig that I felt I had was a uh, Angular U. I don't know if you remember Angular U. Yeah, uh, they did that one year, didn't they? Or was it two years? One year. Yeah, I think it was just one year. Yeah, I think so too. Um, up in San Francisco. Yep. So I actually talked about uh, Angular JS and, and how we did multi-app on a single page, multi-Angular JS apps on a single page dynamically. Mm-hmm. And that was pretty fun. Uh, and then I got a chance to speak at NGConf uh, in yep. 2016 and 2017 at a talk on uh, Angular 2's fresh approach to style. And that was really exciting. I'm I'm pretty stoked about how that came out. Uh, And then last year, I had a talk on Embrace Component Tranquility, and I was really amped to do that talk. Uh, It was something that I thought of a lot as we went into Angular and this whole um, people componentizing things and and how do you architect components in your application and the things you need to think about and the things you could run into and and how to embrace that. And I had this message that that I, I was really looking forward to having the opportunity to, to speak about and I got that chance. And so I'm uh, pretty proud about that one and, and happy about that one. And then I also spoke at NG Cruise, uh, template or reactive form. So that was pretty fun. Awesome. I keep hoping they'll do that one again, but I haven't heard anything. So yeah, yeah, that would be great. It was, it was pretty fun. Um, I mean, I'm a big lover of the beach. And oh, sun, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's like great mix for me. Nice. So um, I think you mentioned at some point that you're working for Narwhal now. Yeah. Yep. So how is that? Because it seems like I talk I talk to people, and the more people I talk to, you know, that are doing interesting things in Angular, uh, they're either on the Angular team or they're working for Narwhal. So. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing. It's uh, it's great to uh, be a part of that team. You know, it's we just keep attracting more people onto that team and getting the opportunity to work with everybody uh, on a daily basis is, I mean, for me, it was one of the big draws uh, to just be interacting and in, in around uh, mm-hmm. this other experience and knowledge and, and creative people and passionate people. Um, it, it's been really great. So did you apply to work there or did they approach you? So kind of... Jeff and Victor and I, and Jeff and I mostly talked uh, at NG Cruise mm-hmm. and kind of uh, started out there, uh, helped them out with a, um, a 
a workshop uh, for a client and then we kind of talked from there and they felt this need that they wanted to kind of, you know, this the product that we kind of do, one of the products we're doing right now is this Angular Playground, uh, or I'm sorry, Angular Playbook for training material and stuff like that. And felt that I could potentially be a good fit to help that out. And so um, that was kind of our discussion there. Uh, so that's kind of how I got in there um, back last July. Mm -hmm. It was last July. So, yeah. Cool. So what are you working on now? Is it that playbook or are there other things? Yeah, so it's it's a lot of work on the playbook. Uh, we got some additional courses that we're going to be planning here in the future. So we're going to be working on that. Um, some client work. Also, we, we help out clients as, as well. A lot of things in, in that realm. So doing a lot of that. Uh, and of course, Angular Air. Uh, and um, playing around with a few things here and there. Uh, trying to figure out a, a few different helper code, trying to solve some, thinking about some different problems in Angular. Um, a lot of stuff like recently I've been thinking a lot about little tidbits of things that I wish were in the Angular platform. Like mm -hmm. for example, uh, like a let, like an ng let, like an ng if, right? Um, there's been a lot of talk about this. Everybody's kind of thought about this idea. So it's nothing new, but I sure wish it was there. I think a lot of people would wish it was there too. Like something to be able to use the async pipe and get a hold of, of something from the async pipe without necessarily using an ng if to do so. So you could use a, a template variable for that and use that within your, you know, template markup and stuff like that. So little things like that, that, um, I don't know if there's room for trying to make like an extended library that, that can fill in those gaps that maybe would have some potential for maybe getting mixed into the main. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. That's something I've been thinking about a lot recently. The other thing is that, uh, I really want to do more with GraphQL in Angular. I think GraphQL is a pretty amazing solution for aggregating data from the back end and uh, being able to flex your front end uh, a lot easier uh, to adapt to the different payload types and stuff you want across across the wire. So I'd like to get more time into that as well. So Cool. Very cool. Um, if people want to follow what you're working on these days or see what you're thinking about, is Twitter the best place to go? I also encourage people to go to angularair.isit.com. Yeah, angular.com has a list of our uh, an old old site. I'm, I'm working on trying to get time to update that site. It would be great. It would make it a little easier <laughs> for me to add. But uh, yeah, that has a list of all our episodes and stuff upcoming. But for me, uh, pretty active on Twitter, so that's the best place to probably reach me. Uh, Shorty, S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Y. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm, I'm always on there. Uh, I think DMs are open, so you can always hit me up and, and do a lot of my communication through there. So for sure, yeah. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and do some picks. Do you have some things you want to shout out about? For you, the listeners of My Angular Story, Loot Crate is offering an opportunity to save 10% on any new subscription at lootcrate.com. Just enter the promo code BRIDGE10 for 10% savings. Loot Crate is one of my favorite things. Every month I get a box in the mail, Costs less than $20, and it comes with all kinds of goodies. I have stuff from just looking at my shelf, Batman, Spider-Man, Ninja Turtles, Back to the Future, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and much, much more. So if you're a geek, a gamer, anything like that, and you want cool stuff to put around your office, uh, cool t-shirts, comic books, etc., then definitely check out Loot Crate. To save 10% on your new subscription, go to lootcrate.com slash ruby. Again, that's lootcrate.com slash ruby to save 10% on any new subscription. Enter the promo code BRIDGE10 for 10% savings. Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> I want to shout out about Postman, the, the client that for working with APIs and stuff or uh -huh. for REST calls like that. Uh, many people are familiar with that. But every time I go away from it, don't need it for a while, and then come back to it, I'm just always blown away. I'm excited about it. I think it, it's just such a great experience for testing REST APIs, endpoints, or any type of uh, network communication and stuff like that. Um, it's just it's awesome. Very cool. I'm going to jump in with a couple of picks. Um, the software, so I've been doing React Dev Summit actually this week. Um, I, I tend to do these online conferences periodically. Um, I did one for Angular last year. I need to actually get around to releasing those videos um, because I hold on to them for paid ticket holders for a few months and then get them out. But um, we're probably going to be doing another one here in September. So 
Um, I'll be reaching out to a whole bunch of people and seeing if they want to come speak. But uh, the software that I use is Webinar Jam. And um, I just, you know, got in and they've, they've made some updates to it. And I keep reminding myself how nice it is. So uh, I'm going to pick that. Um, and then you mentioned your website, um, you know, that you want to update the website. And we use WordPress here. And I found a, a theme that I really like for WordPress called Newspaper. And so um, I've been using that. And then there's another one called Advanced Custom Fields. And that's how we add all the podcast fields to the posts. And um, and then I've just done a little bit of wrangling on the um, theme. You create a child theme and then you can override parts of the theme. And so I've, you know, I've overridden it to put players in and things like that. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to pick the newspaper theme and uh, WordPress. If you go to WordPress.org, you know, you can, you can install it. It's pretty easy. And then I just use Git to push it up. So I just do a Git push. Um, and then I have a receive hook on there that, basically goes and checks it out to the right place on the server and then it's all sim linked and it just works so anyway um so yeah so if you're looking for some idea there i might be able to help you out but if you're looking to kind of custom build something or use firebase or something like that i'm probably not your guy so anyway. yeah to check that out yeah i'm looking for something that makes it easier for me to manage it over time right yeah uh, yep yeah, sure. that that's the reason I had a custom Rails app for a long time, and that's why I went back to WordPress. Is just that then I didn't have to be the developer and the you know the the podcaster. So anyway, I am actually working on though. Speaking of being the developer and all the rest of it, I'm working on a platform for managing podcasts. So that that's where I've spent a lot of my time doing podcasts. Um, it's not a single page app. I don't know if it needs to be, but I am looking to you know use probably view or something to actually insert the dynamic parts of the page where I need them. But anyway, nice. um, but yeah, and then I guess I mentioned react. So I should also call out, we have a react podcast, uh, that's react roundup. And we've also got a view podcast that's views on view. And, um, you know, some people you'll recognize on the, on those, uh, shows, the react podcast in particular has, um, uh, Kent C. Dodds, who started Angular Air, incidentally, and um, Tara Manixic, um, and she's spoken at a number of Angular conferences that I've been to. And then on the Views on View podcast, John Papa and Joe Eames are regulars on that one too. So nice, that's cool. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap the show up. But thanks for coming, Justin. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It was fun. All right. Well, hopefully people go check it out. Go uh, subscribe to Angular Air and uh, we will catch you all next week. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more.